Good evening, everybody. It is 716 here in Florida, and peace, blessings, and love to everybody. Okay, you guys, what I want to do this evening is do a two-part series. This will be part one of two, and uh, we're going to be doing it on the revelation of our Lord Jesus the Christ and exactly what he has done for you by your faith in him. Okay, so this says here, the revelation of our Lord Jesus the Christ is from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. He was with God and is God from the beginning. It says in John 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So, in the beginning was the Word. It also says in John 1.14, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, in the beginning was the Word, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, the same that is from the beginning. Because we can see that in John 1, it says, And the Word was God. And it says in John 3, All things were made by Him. Then we see that the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So we see that Jesus, the Word, spoke everything into existence. So he is the spoken Word. He is the written Word. As the Holy Spirit of God breathed upon anointed and appointed men of God, they wrote his Word. And he is the Word that became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So the Word was God. And the Word spoke everything into existence, including the written revelation of himself. And then he was made manifest, Emmanuel, meaning God in the flesh as a man. It says in Romans 8, 3, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So what does it mean that Jesus was made in the likeness of sinful flesh? The word says in Matthew 1, 20 through 23, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. As you can see, Scripture says, For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. This means Jesus was born in the likeness of sinful flesh, but not after Adam, because the word says, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus' DNA was not of the man Adam. It says in Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So from the seed of Adam... All have a sin nature that results in not only spiritual death, but a physical death as well. 
We are doomed to sin and death in every sense of the word through the DNA of Adam. That's why we must receive Jesus as our Savior. How? By believing in the blood sacrifice, the death, burial, and the resurrection of a man named Jesus that was made in the likeness of sin, full flesh, sinful flesh that had no sin nature because he did not come from Adam's sinful loins. He is God in the flesh. It says in Hebrews 1, 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now the word purged means purge someone or something of an unwanted, unwanted quality, condition, or feeling. It means remove, get rid of, clear out, sweep out, expel, eject, exclude, evict, dis dismiss. And it also means to eradicate. And that means to destroy completely put an end to, okay? So he put an end to sin through his precious blood. So through Jesus' blood sacrifice, his death, burial, and resurrection, we are then by faith quickened together with him, made alive eternally on the inner man through his resurrection unto life that gives us justification Quickened means to be alive, to cause to be enlivened. It says in Hebrews 10.4, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. And it also says in Scripture in Leviticus 17.11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Now the word atonement means reparation, payment. So he made a payment with his blood for your soul and for your sin and for your death. Now the word soul means the spiritual or immaterial part of a human being or animal. So the blood of bulls and goats, animals, could never completely once and for all take away the sin of mankind. And yes, I am saying sin in the singular, the sin of mankind. It says, it says in Hebrews 10, 1 through 3, For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more consciousness of sins or conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. And that was on the Day of Atonement, you guys. It says in Hebrews 10.10, 10, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And who is that for all? It's for all who would just put their faith and their belief and their trust in him. It's for all who have believed in him. Scripture says, We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified 
by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians 2, 15, 16. This is speaking about believing Jews by the nature means their conscience has been purged by their faith in Jesus and not by the works of the law of Moses, which their sin sacrifices only gave a covering for a time period. But with Jesus' blood, you are washed completely clean in his blood. It says in Ephesians 2.15. Now this is the context of Ephesians 2.15. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Peace with who? Peace with Father God. He's the bridge, you guys. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body. Who's the both? Unto God, the Jew and the Gentile, by faith. By the cross having slain the enmity thereby. Now the word enmity means hostility. Why? Because we know as a mere man, we just cannot, or mankind, we just cannot hold up to the law. So on the inner man, no, and the inner, the inner man and the outer man, we have natural enmity, hostility towards God, okay? And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Again, this scripture is written for the Hebrew and Gentile that have been made one in Christ Jesus. And it says in Ephesians 2, 18, I mean, I'm sorry, 8 through 19, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, Jesus gets all the glory. All the glory goes exactly where it belongs to Jesus. We don't deserve any glory. All we deserve is death, okay? And without him, <laughs> that's exactly what you get, all right? So, it says in 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by the hands. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that he 
might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And it says in Revelation 1, 5, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins with his own blood. It says in Ephesians 2, 5, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. Now that word grace there means unmerited, undeserved favor. Romans 5, 1, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, 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 and amen, and amen. So when we truly understand what Jesus has done for us, that produces grace and love. Why? Because we have been given grace. That means, in the biblical sense, unmerited, undeserved favor. We have been pardoned from our sins because he loves us that much, that he bore our sins in his own body to cancel out our sin debt, which the wages of sin is death, and a debt that has been paid in full is a debt that is no longer owed. Jesus proclaimed on the cross, it is finished. Jesus was your substitute. He died in your stead. But since he had no sin, death could not hold him. And if you have put your faith, trust, and belief in him, death cannot hold you either. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe it? Do you believe Jesus loves you that much? that he bore all your sin, and I do mean in the singular sin, in his body, and he spilt his precious blood for you. And all you have to do is put your faith, put your trust in him, just believe. Just know that you're a sinner in need of a savior, and that our loving God, our wonderful loving God, came down here himself, and put on a robe of flesh and died in your stead, giving you peace back with Father God through him and only through him. You just have faith in him. You believe in him. Put your trust in him, your hope in him. His blood, not your blood. It was his work, not your work. It was his righteousness that's imputed to you by your faith in him, not your righteousness. Praise his holy name, by which the only name there is to be saved, Jesus. God bless each and every one of you. Amen and amen.